Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Orange Line. I'm Kelsey Epperson. And I'm Matt Quant. While we've all read about the downfalls of the economic situation and the budget cuts, a few positives have come out of the situation here on Baker's campus. I had a chance to sit down with a few Baker professors to talk about it. Certain faculty on campus have found ways to help the university during these hard economic times. Leonard Ortiz chose to teach a class for free. I was students because I really wanted to teach a class. I just loved teaching this course. And there were there was only four students enrolled at the time. And three of them had talked to me about how excited they were about wanting to take this class. And so I didn't want to let them down. And I just felt like, wow, they're so excited. Um, I want to be there for, to do it. And I love teaching it. I'll do it for free. It doesn't matter to me. I'm, I felt like I could do that. So initially, it wasn't just for the budget reasons. It was my own selfish desire to teach the class. But at the end of the day, it was about the budget because they just couldn't uh, have teachers teaching classes with very low enrollment. While this situation is not ideal, Ortiz was happy to do what he could to help. When it comes to the budget, if these things happen again, I would be willing to do it. But you know, obviously, we want to get paid for our work. Um, so it's not something I would do um, just for the heck of it, but in certain situations concerning the budget, I would. Ortiz's actions are appreciated, but he is not the only faculty going out of his way to help Baker University and its students during this time. But I do know that some faculty members have offered to teach like some, uh, courses over the summer for free um, and have volunteered to take wage cuts, salary cuts as well. Um, just kind of doing extra duties, making donations to the university. But it's all been uh, something that hasn't really been um, promoted or highlighted. I think it's a very personal thing. And, you know, the bottom line is we're doing it for the university, doing it for the students. I mean, everything that we do is to help make it better for the students that they don't have to see such an increase in, in tuition. All of this effort by Baker faculty is greatly appreciated. Thanks for that, Matt. In case you haven't noticed, it's that time of year again. The 2009-2010 FAFSA worksheets have arrived. February is rapidly coming to a close, and if you are not graduating before September, it is crucial that you complete the FAFSA and financial aid renewal application. Kansas residents want to make it a priority to have the FAFSA completed and turned in by March 1st because the state grant maximum award is increasing next year to $3,500 if your FAFSA is processed by April 1st. If you have not done so already, your renewal application and FAFSA can be picked up outside of the Financial Aid Office, Harder Union, Room 18, or you can print off one on the FAFSA website. Baker University's federal school code is 001903, and make sure you have your pens from last year. Both forms can be returned to the Office of Financial Aid or completed online. Stay tuned after these short commercial breaks. Welcome back. For this week's Staff Spotlight, Truman Edwards had a chance to sit down with Ron Holden, Director of Multicultural Affairs. Multiculturalism is a very hot-button topic these days, and it's very important to our future as a nation. I got a chance to talk to Ron Holden about this very important topic. The job of multicultural affairs encompasses several different things. You know, it's not just uh, a diversity job. It's a position where I get to interact uh, on a daily basis with the students here at Baker, uh, something which I truly enjoy. Uh, many of you who are freshmen in the FY 150 program uh, have seen me come to your classrooms and do a diversity workshop on stereotypes, um, as well as advising Mangano, uh, doing different uh, diversity events on campus. Um, so I'd say my job is multifaceted and it allows me an opportunity to really get out and work directly with the Baker community. Usually you will find Ron in his office helping students with their problems and for him this is the most rewarding part of the job. Seeing students graduate, watching them mature, you know, as they come in as freshmen, you know, seeing where they're at and then, you know, four years later they graduate from Baker University, seeing them walk across that stage with that degree uh, is really rewarding. It's, it's a very rewarding experience for me. I say the most difficult part is knowing when to let go. You know, it's, it's, it's very easy at a place like Baker to be so involved, uh, as you as a student are aware, it's so easy to be so involved and care so much that you overextend yourself. Uh, I'd say that's the most challenging part of my job is learning when to, to step back and sometimes let, let things happen as they will. 
When Ron's not in his office, you may be able to find him in the Union, advising Mangano. I got a chance to talk to Jessica Beckham about Ron's importance to Mangano. I think Ron does a very good job. He always tries to get people to think of different things and just tries to open your eyes to diversity and other issues. And he tries his hardest to keep everyone working well together. Thanks to the continual efforts of Ron Holden, Baker University is a more diverse campus. I am Truman Edwards, KMBU TV. Thanks for that, Truman.